This is Garmin's D2 Mark I Pilot Watch, which has just been upgraded to this, the D2 Mark I Pro. But what's the difference between the two watches? What makes this one pro? And what's the one feature on this new watch that I think you're gonna be quite interested in? To answer that last question, I need to get something out of the baggage compartment of Echo Yankee Zoom. couple of differences between these two watches then. The D2 Mark I actually has a slightly smaller watch face than the D2 Mark I Pro. The Mark I is a 1.3 inch face and the D2 Mark I Pro, you can see that's slightly bigger because that's got a 1.4 inch face. In terms of the general build though, it's pretty much the same as the previous iteration of for the watch. The charging ports on the back are the same. It uses the same charging cable and the heart rate monitor, those little green lights that flicker on the back of the watch, those are in the same place on both watches. Also, the buttons around the outside are the same between the two. You have three main buttons for navigating on the left side of the watch. And then on the other side of the watch, you've got two buttons exactly the same as the D2 Mark I. Both watches can come with a titanium wrist strap. The Mark I, the original watch, it's kind of more silver in color. The Mark I Pro, the newer one, it's kind of like almost a matte black, gunmetal gray color. Now, in terms of software, what like what you can actually do with these two watches, it's actually quite similar. Like, let's keep it to 30 seconds. If only I had some way of timing this 30 seconds. Here are my top features of what you can do on the Garmin Mark I and the Mark I Pro. Enter an airport or a waypoint and you can get direct to navigation from your watch. There's a moving map, there's real-time weather, an HSI needle, you can display UTC and multiple configurable time zones, there's a pulse oximeter to measure your blood oxygen saturation levels, you can get information about the airport you're flying to, there's an altimeter, a barometer, a sunrise and sunset calculator, a jet lag advisor, plus there's health tracking as well for things like your heart rate, body battery, stress levels, you can GPS log sports, things like running, cycling, swimming, Water sports, motorsport, motorsports. I didn't. I honestly didn't know you could do motorsports on here. That gives me an idea for a future video. But let me focus on the Mark One Pro for a second, and probably the one feature that you may have seen on the internet already, and I obviously showed at the beginning of this video, which is yes, this watch does have a torch built into it. Now hanging here on the back of my passenger seat in the aircraft, I have this little pack of a couple of tools that I always fly with. It's basically I've got a knife. Uh, there's a cutting tool for my seatbelt if my seatbelt gets stuck. And one of the other items I have is this torch. So I was curious to know if this torch, could that legally... Let me pull up the CASA uh, requirements for flying at night. A shockproof electric torch is required for each crew member. But does... I mean, this is obviously a torch. Does this count as a torch in CASA's eyes. So I dug into the regulations a little bit more and I actually found this ruling of what CASA defines as a torch. And they say, a torch carried by a flight crew member meets the definition as an independent portable light if it is serviceable, serviceable in this case meaning fulfilling its function, is it usable basically, and can produce sufficient light to properly illuminate any switch, control or display that the pilot may be required to use or view in normal, abnormal and emergency situations. Just taking that properly illuminate any switch or display, if I turn it on, even in the daytime here, you can see what a difference it actually makes to illuminating um, everything here on the dashboard in front of me, my main switches, my comms panel. But it's clear that this would do an effective job of illuminating any area of the cockpit that I might need in an abnormal situation. So yes, I am confident that I could use this as a torch. I'm still gonna carry this, of course, because backups are great, but it is kind of nice to know that if things did go dark in the cockpit, I don't actually need to reach behind the passenger seat anymore. I can just double click that uh, switch on top of my watch and, and illuminate the cockpit if needs be. Now, you may be thinking, well, hang on, that's a very bright white light. Isn't that gonna blind your night vision if you're flying along at nighttime? Well, yes, it would. The other cool feature of this watch is you can convert this white light into a red one. So if you are flying at nighttime and you just want to illuminate, maybe you want to illuminate your notebook, you're taking some notes, you've got a clearance from air traffic control, you can just turn on the red light instead and your night vision won't be affected. Now the clever thing about the watch is whichever state you last turn the flashlight on for, you can just then double click and it will keep coming on that way. So I'll probably keep it on the red light because it's better for my eyes and it just looks cooler. I mean, come on. On the subject of using this watch at nighttime then as well, there's something on this watch called red shift and what that will do 
is it will use a, a red light basically. It will shift everything from the bright white light to a red one. So if you are looking at the time on your watch at night time, again, you don't get that bright white light in your face. Now you can just turn the red shift on and off on the watch manually, of course, but the other cool thing you can do is there's a do not disturb function with Garmin. And when your watch goes into do not disturb mode, it will automatically go to red shift mode as well. So if you are flying at night time and you might forget to turn the red shift on, at least you know after a certain time, your watch is gonna go into that red shift mode. There's one feature I haven't tested yet on this, but apparently you can pair your Mark 1 Pro to a device like an InReach, which is what I use for two reasons. I use it for tracking my flights via GPS, but I also use it as a backup emergency locator. The theory being that if I press this SOS button, if there is an emergency, then it will send out a signal with my location. Now with the Mark 1 Pro, you can pair your watch to your inReach and trigger that SOS function from the watch. The great thing about all that is if your inReach is not in reach, like say it's in the aircraft and you've evacuated it, or, or maybe it's, it's underneath the seat and you can't get to it because you're injured, your watch is gonna be on your wrist, hopefully still. So by being able to trigger the SOS function from your watch, it's just, it's another step that means if something catastrophic did happen, I can trigger a beacon, which will hopefully get people to come and find me and, and rescue me from whatever situation I'm in. And one massive difference, one huge upgrade from the D2 Mark I to the D2 Mark I Pro, and I still can't believe that this is actually possible with a watch like this, is the battery life. The original Mark I had 11 days of battery life, which you could get from a full charge when it's just in its smartwatch mode, and up to 24 hours in its fly mode. That's if you're using GPS tracking and the uh, oxygen saturation test at the same time. Now the D2 Mark I Pro in smartwatch mode has up to 25 days of battery life and in fly mode, so if you're using the GPS and your oxygen saturation levels are being tested continuously as well, it will last for 46 hours. That's almost two days. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't wanna be in a plane measuring my oxygen saturation levels for two days continuously. Compared to some of the other smartwatches out there, I think that's a phenomenal bit of technology and, and innovation to ha have a watch which can give you 25 days of battery life. I've, I haven't actually charged, I've, actually, I've charged this once since I've had it. I've had it for a week and what are we on? 61% still. <laughs> So, who is this watch actually for? Now, I've said it before on this channel, and I'll always say it about technology. If you are a student pilot and you're just starting out and you're learning how to fly, you do not need a watch like this. Spend your money on flying lessons and fuel instead of on a watch like this. Now, if you are an existing D2 Mark I user, if you already have one of these watches, then unless you really want the new features like the extended battery life, the torch, everything else I've spoken about in this video, then this is still a really good watch for pilots and maybe you don't necessarily need to upgrade to a watch like this. Garmin also do have a sale on the original Mark I on their website. As I record this, Garmin do currently have a sale on their website for the Mark I, the original D2 Mark I, so perhaps jump online and see if there is a sale for the original watch if you're interested in the two of them, but this might be more what you're after. But if you're like me, you love your technology, you like your gadgets, you're really into aviation as well, and of course the bottom line here is if you can afford it, it's not an inexpensive piece of technology, but if you like it and you can afford it, why not? It's brilliant. I'm gonna fly with this watch over the next couple of weeks, do some more testing, really see what it can do. So let me know in the comments below any questions that you might have for me, anything you wanna see about this watch or any follow-up questions from this video, let me know and I'll jump online in the comments when this video goes live and try and answer them.